Hello again YouTube. Today I'm going to be working on my 89 Camaro and I'm going to be doing the rear brakes. In my last video I did the front brakes and there's a link for that so if you want to watch that. But in this video we're going to be doing the rear brakes and not just the brakes. I'm going to be doing new rotors, new brake pads. I was going to be doing new calipers but I can't exactly do that because no one around here sells them so that's going to have to be on hold for now. Um, and I'm also going to be doing the rear bearings so all of that put together in one happy slappy video. So first things first, jack up your car, which it is, and uh, take your tires off. This is the back side of the wheel if you can orient yourself the left side of the car but behind here is your e-brake there's a little spring and everything and I just want to trace this up this line right here trace it and this thing goes there's it there it is it goes up here it loops around and it connects up there but what I wanted to go to is up here because both sides, if you trace it yourself, it's a really hard angle. If you trace it yourself, the one right there is on the left side of the car. And then you have the adjustment right there. And that one goes to the right side of the car. It's a really simple system. And if you just get a crescent wrench or whatever size that is, I haven't figured it out yet. And you tighten that up, that'll tighten both sides at the same time. And that will lead continue on to the, the front of the car. But you tighten both of those up, it'll get both your left and right side if you do need to tighten up your e-brake. Alright, so the next step is to get this caliper off. And to get this caliper off, there's two bolts that are 15 millimeter. Right here on the inside, there's one and two, so go ahead and take those off. Alright, now that you've taken both the bolts off, your caliper will come off. And if you just need to do any kind of uh, just brake pads, you can take them off from here and replace them and just do the opposite steps. But I'm going to go further and I'm going to replace the rotor. Now this is a big, 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 big pain in the ass to get off, especially if it's rusted on like mine is. But uh, if you're replacing the rotors, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to take off any special bolts or anything like that. This is only being held in by rust. So, feel free to grab your big ol' hammer and start smashing away at this thing. You're replacing it anyway, so it's okay if you start gashing it, and which is already, already gashed up pretty well. But sooner or later, you're eventually going to get your wobble like that, which means it's loose. So give it a little bit of elbow grease, it'll come straight out. And this is what it's going to look like once you pop it off. So the next step is to take four of these nuts off. One here, here. I already took the bottom ones off. And down there. So just four of them keeping this uh, cover on. And those are going to, again, be 15 millimeter. All right, so I noticed something when I was doing my other side over there on the right that mine might be different than yours, but um, as you may know, there's not a whole lot of info there on third gens, especially the rears. So I'm not sure. If you do know what it's properly supposed to be, please leave something in the comments or message me or something. But um, when I took all four of these bolts off, like I said, um, I assumed that there would be C-clips uh, that are holding the axles in place and the differential, and then I'd have to take that off. But mine do not and mine come out with the axle and it looks like what I have going on here this plate and this plate I don't know if this is what it's supposed to be or if this is aftermarket uh, rear end but it looks like it has a c-clip eliminator I'm not sure but um, I'll go over both ways because I have no idea what you guys have so this whole thing 
is going to come out if yours does look like this. Um, all of that's going to come out if you do not have this and your axle doesn't come out. That means you have C-clips in the differential and we have to take that out. So if you do have this rear end, this is my other side that I already have cleaned up for you. Um, this piece is part of the rear end and I cleaned up all the outside to get all that nasty stuff off so I get a good seal when I put it back on because I don't use C-clips. And on here, where the bearings are, I cleaned off the bottom. This is the piece that attaches on here. Cleaned off the bottom of this and the bearings that are in here is another thing. That I wasn't expecting. Don't know how to get the bearings off, but the bearings are good. I'm not going to replace them. I'm just going to regrease it a little bit. I read online that uh, the rear bearings you don't want to super pack full of grease like you would the front ones because of heat. So uh, pack it full of grease, not 100% full of grease, but uh, regrease that. Everything in there looks good, so I can put that back in and. Um, go back over to that diff. I do need to replace my diff fluid anyway. So it's a win-win. Win for me, win for you. So you want to take off your differential cover. Uh, mine are 13 millimeter bolts all the way around. Uh, you're going to start taking them off from the bottom and the fluid is going to start coming out. So have your catch pan on the bottom and once all that is done draining then you can finish by taking the top one off. Uh, don't take all the bolts off at the same time because it kind of becomes a super messy thing. So take the bottom ones off first. All right, there it goes. I had to get the uh, screwdriver and kind of wedge it in between there and pop it out, but I got it. It's draining. Now I just need to take this cover off. Now that I got the cover off and everything's been drained, I'm going to use some brake cleaner. I'm going to go through here because this stuff is quite old and it's kind of become real thick and sticky and everything that you don't want it to be. So I'm going to spray it through here. It's going to drain out, go into the same place, and I'm just going to use a normal toothbrush, something soft bristle to get as much as I can out. And um, once I'm done using the brake cleaner, I'm going to let this sit for a while to make sure everything has completely evaporated before I actually finish up this job. So the inside of the diff here, if you did have the ones with the C-clip, you'd be able to see the actual axle that runs all the way through here will come inside and you can see the end of it. And at the end of it, there's going to be a C-clip that you can pull out. There will be a little notch that looks something like this. And that is going to come out, and because that C-clip comes out, then you can push it straight out. Now that I have it cleaned out, I put my rag over the top so I don't get any kind of debris in there while I'm down here. But uh, I'm going to use a razor, and I'm going to go uh, on the inside. I already got the bottom, but you're going to run it along here. You're going to go along and you're going to get all of the old seal off of there. And uh, the bottom part, I don't have to worry about getting into the actual diff, but on the top part, I don't want anything falling in there. So, stuck a rag up there. And you're going to do this on the cover that you already took off. Same thing, any kind of seal that was stuck onto there, scrape it off, make sure both surfaces are as smooth as possible. Now that I have everything cleared off, all around the sides of this. I used a razor to make sure it's nice and clean and then a wire brush to get off any little bits that I couldn't get with the razor. Now that that is cleaned off, I can go ahead and put my gasket on here and my diff cover that I am done painting over here. And then we get to fill it with some diff fluid. Now it's a good idea to keep all of these relatively loose when you first start putting them in. Um, 
It's a little bit loose. It's not super tight on there. Um, keep them relatively loose as you're going around because all the different bolts you're going to be putting in need a little bit of wiggle room just to get that first thread in. But once you get them all around, then you can start tightening them. Now that I have all of the bolts on and they're nice and tight, now I can finally get my dish fluid and fill it up in the plug uh, where the plug is supposed to go. If you don't have the plug on here and you have a, a different dip end, it's probably up top, up here, or maybe on the other side. That's where I saw a lot of the other ones at. So make sure you get the right diff fluid if it's non-slip differential or not with additives, whatever you want, and uh, fill it up. And you know when it's full, when you're filling it up and it starts to drip out, that's when you know it's full. Um, some of these are kind of hard to get to. I've seen people get their uh, diff bottle and a uh, rubber hose and put it up to it and lead it into wherever the fill tank is and either hold it up and try to squeeze it through and get it in there. So I had to end up using the hose method I was just talking about. There's already a little lip that's on these uh, bottles of uh, diff fluid, so I've got a, a hose that's connected up there. I'm going to put the end into here. And I should just be able to reach it up like this, let it drain in there, and just squeeze it, and it'll start flowing. Okay, I just got done filling it up, and I just got a little bit of runoff, letting me know that it is nice and full. And what I'm going to do before I plug this back up and I'm done is got my foot here on the tire and I'm just going to turn the tire because I have my car in neutral and I'm just going to turn the tires so I can get all that fluid moving and what it's going to do is it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to. It's going to start catching, it's getting on the gears, getting everywhere that it's supposed to if you have cleaned it out. And once you get everything moving then the fluid level is going to drop a little bit and then you just refill with a little bit more and you should be at a good level and everything should be nice and filled now you can put your plug back in and you'll be good and back here on the brakes it's going to be the reverse process of taking them off um, I put the new rotors on they slap right on there it's a little hard to get it around here because it is quite rusty so I got before I put it back on I got the wire brush went around here to smooth it out a little bit and then these calipers come back on I put the new brake pads in there brand new and thick and same thing as when I did my fronts uh, I put a, a vice little clamp inside there when I had them off to put that piston back into place in the complete closed position or else it won't fit on here. So now I just throw the tires back on, put the lug nuts on, drop it, tighten it up, and uh, let you see how it looks. That's what it looks like all done. And again, I still have not washed this and I really need to.